In this Maya 3D modeling tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the 3D paint tool so you can paint textures directly on your objects without any seams and really not worrying about the UVs too much. So to do this, I have a simple polysphere. When you bring in a polysphere from the poly modeling shelf, it will have a Lambert shader. We need to have some shader applied to the material in order to paint. We cannot use any Arnold shaders such as AI Standard Surface. It has to be a Maya shader such as Fong, Blin, Lambert, or any other Maya shaders. If you want to use an Arnold shader, then you need to paint your textures in Mudbox. So how do we paint 3D? First, we'll go to the rendering tool shelf by clicking rendering up at the top here. Then we'll click on this brush icon. When I do that, I get this big red X. So that means probably something's wrong. How do I fix this? I'll go up to the top right and click the hammer. So this is the tool settings. I need to make sure that I have a texture on this material because otherwise there's nowhere for the paint to go. The only thing on here is the standard color for blend. To do this, I come down to the bottom of the tool settings window under file textures. Here it says attribute to paint. We're gonna start by painting the color. So I'll click assign edit textures. By default, it will be down at about 256. This is a very low res texture. So I recommend bumping this up to something like 1024 or 248. Click assign edit textures. And now it has a simple gray square applied as its texture. We can paint right on here. In order to paint, you would just click the left mouse button. But as you can see, my brush is very big. If I wanna change the size of my brush, I press B and then left mouse button, left or right, and my brush will be much smaller and more concentrated. If we scroll up in the 3D Paint Tool menu options, notice that we have many different types of brushes. I can paint with a square if I so choose. There are many different ways to paint and I can change the opacity. Right now it's at 0.67. I could lower that and paint even lighter squares, or I could paint darker squares every time. So this works just like most graphic and painting programs. In addition to just having brushes like this, we can also use brushes that are images. So for example, if I click this icon right here, then click this folder, I can use some of the preset brushes. For example, I can click furry, and this will give me this furry texture. Notice these are just JPEG files that are black and white. Just make a black square in Photoshop and then paint on the white colors that you want to use as the brush. So I'll press open, and now I can paint this furry texture on my object. So this works just like any graphical painting program. Then down under paint operations, we have erase, so I can erase through things. I can also blur things. So this is blurs the edges. It's a little bit different than uh, smudging. So this just makes it blurry, whereas smear will actually make it like wet oil paint that you're smearing around or watercolor. So hopefully you can see the difference between blur just makes it fuzzy, which is nice. And then smear kind of blends the pieces together and it'll go from the color. So if I drag this way, the gray will go into that color. If I drag this way, the blue goes into that color. We can also flood, and flood is like a paint bucket tool, but flooding behaves differently than you may be expecting. If I click flood paint, it flooded everything. So it didn't differentiate between colors that were already on the model. If I want to only flood certain areas, I need to right click, go to face mode, then press Q, shift click a certain area, say these areas here, then if I click back onto the paintbrush tool, I can click flood selected faces, pick a new color, let's pick this pink, and then if I say flood paint, it'll only go here. Now, this is also only where your brush will work, so this can be very convenient. So if I go back to my brushes, with this selected, it will only paint inside here. So if I go up and I select my furry brush, now the blue will only paint inside this shape. This can be very convenient for adding specific details to your model on certain edges. To deselect this, I need to press Q and off click. Then I can go back into the paint mode and begin painting again. There are a lot of interesting brushes and things that we can do. So I'll pick this yellow color, then I'll click flood paint and make the whole object yellow. 
Then I'm going to get a texture file. Let's see. How about this sponge uh, brush right here? Click open. I can use the eyedropper to pick this color and then use the slider to pick different shades of that color. So now I'm painting this sponge color and maybe I want to go back in time and make this just a little bit more translucent. So then I'm painting on here and maybe that's just too big and I want this color to be much brighter. And then I'll hold B and make my brush bigger. So now I can now paint on this and it makes it much more diffuse as I paint. So I can go around and paint this however I so choose. Maybe then I'll go ahead and get an even brighter color and paint some on here. So now I have all of this visual texture. Once I'm happy with it, I'll click Save Textures. And now it is a texture in my Source Images folder under 3D Paint Textures. In addition to painting the color, we can also paint bump maps. So under File Textures, from the drop-down menu, pick Bump Map. Then you click Assign Edit Textures. Keep it the same size. Click Assign Edit Textures. And now we'll be painting a bump map. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and get a new brush. For example, let's get this uh, skin bump brush right here and click open. And if I paint on here with a color, so let's go to black and white. And if I paint here, you'll see that I'm painting surface texture, right? You can see how that actually is changing the way the light bounces off my object. Now I have a lumpy. This doesn't change the geometry. It just changes the appearance of it, the way the light hits it. And if you want to see just this bump map texture, you can solo as diffuse. So you can see this bump map texture that I'm creating. Now I'm gonna go get a white color. And notice that I have my opacity down. Bump maps work really good with gradients. So now let's unsolo that so you can see what's happening. So you can see I'm adding all this chunkiness to my texture. And then if I wanna go back to color, I can just save this bump map texture and then go back to color and I can paint right on top of this, which is really nice. So hopefully you're able to add textures and colors to your file very easily. If you want to see how this is working, you can close the, you can close the tool settings, go to the UV editing workspace, and then you'll see that this texture is over here, right on the UV map. And you see how it spanned across without any problems. If you don't see the image, just press the six key. That toggles the image on and off. And the same over here, if you don't see the image, you can toggle that on uh, with the six key. So this is a great way to add textures on objects. Happy texturing in Autodesk Maya.